Hi there. In this video, we will cover how a part-time and full-time four-wheel drive system works. We will cover in depth two-wheel drive high range, four-wheel drive high range, four-wheel drive low range, open, sensor, limited slip and lock differentials, the wind-up phenomenon, transfer case, torque distribution, torque multiplication, crawl ratios, freewheeling hubs and traction control. So hopefully, by the end of this video, you will better understand and have the knowledge you need to confidently venture off-road in your four-wheel drive vehicle. Four-wheel drive vehicles will have either part-time or full-time four-wheel drive systems. Part-time simply means that the vehicle's engine typically drives two wheels most of the time, yet can be switched to four-wheel drive for greater traction part of the time. A part-time four-wheel drive will typically have a two high, four high and four low option. A full-time four-wheel drive system simply means that the engine typically drives all four wheels of the vehicle all of the time. These will typically have a four high and a four low option with a sensor differential lock. More on this shortly. Let's start with the fundamentals. A vehicle's engine produces torque, that is rotational force. This is coupled to a transmission, either manual or automatic. The transmission's role is to alter the speed and torque and send it to the differential via a drive shaft. The differential, or diff, typically open style, then transmits this torque to the wheels via the axles, one on each side of the differential. In a front wheel drive vehicle, the differential is at the front. In a rear wheel drive vehicle, the differential is at the rear. A four wheel drive vehicle will have two differentials, one at the front and one at the rear. The differential gets its name as it allows torque to be transmitted to the wheels, even if the wheels spin at different speeds. Say a vehicle is turning to the right. The outside left wheels cover more distance and spin faster than the inside right wheels, which cover less distance and spin slower. The beauty with the differential is it does this automatically with no driver input. Now, in a four-wheel drive system, between the transmission and drive shaft is a transfer case. In a part-time four-wheel drive system, the transfer case has two major functions. The first function is to multiply the torque through lower gears, that is low range gearing. Now the second role is where part-time and full-time four-wheel drive systems are different. In a part-time four-wheel drive system, either in four high or four low, the transfer case will distribute the torque equally to the front and rear differentials and does this by locking the front and rear drive shafts together. However, in a full-time four-wheel drive system, a sensor differential lock is used instead to distribute the torque equally to the front and rear differentials. This is because a full-time four-wheel drive also requires a differential action between the front and the rear wheels during normal driving, but more on this shortly. So say our vehicle is in too high or high range two wheel drive, 100% of the engine torque via the transmission is sent to the rear drive shaft, which in turn provides torque to the rear differential. In an ideal case, the differential will split the torque 50-50% equally to each wheel via the axles. In reality, however, the differential will split the torque down the path of least resistance. For example, if one wheel is in the air and has no traction, all the torque will be sent to this wheel as it has the least resistance, essentially meaning you only have one wheel drive. This is a big shortcoming of an open differential. The vehicle in this video is in too high and the rear left wheel starts lifting from the ground. You can see that because this wheel has the least resistance, 100% of the torque is sent all to this wheel. If it was now a locked differential, and most modern four-wheel drives have a rear diff lock and can be activated by the switch of a button, the two wheels or axles are essentially locked together and rotate at the same speed. This allows for an equal 50-50% distribution of torque going to each wheel. So if in our example where one wheel is in the air, the other wheel which does have traction will receive 50% of the torque and allow the vehicle to keep moving. However, a lock differential no longer works as a differential, as it doesn't allow a difference in wheel speed, so it can't be used on high traction surfaces like a bitumen road, and will also restrict the vehicle when turning. 
Some vehicles are fitted with limited slip differentials or advanced traction control systems to help overcome the shortcomings with open differentials. More on this later. Let's see a demonstration of a vehicle in two-wheel drive and on sand. Note the rear wheels which receive all of the torque. And let's see how far we can go with 2H. So not very far. Now, moving on to 4 high or high range 4 wheel drive. In a part time 4 wheel drive, when 4 high is selected, the transfer case locks the rear drive shaft to the front drive shaft. This provides an equal 50-50% split in torque between the front and rear drive shafts. This is great for off-roading as now the front differential and therefore front wheels also receive torque along with the rear. However, in high traction surfaces, this is problematic. If a vehicle is turning to the right, not only are the left outside wheels rotating faster than the inside wheels, but also the front wheels rotate at different speeds to the rear wheels. Hence we have this differential phenomenon, but no sensor differential. This is why part-time four-wheel drives should only be driven in two high on high traction surfaces. If they are driven in four high or four low, the front drive shaft will want to rotate at a different speed to the rear drive shaft, but it can't because they are locked together. This phenomenon is called wind-up, essentially a twisting force known as torsion, which stores potential energy in the drive shafts. This energy has to be released, otherwise it will eventually damage the drive train. In low traction surfaces like gravel, this release of energy can cause the front or rear wheels to skip or skid, and this is perfectly okay and desirable. This is where a part-time four-wheel drive really differs from a full-time four-wheel drive. In a full-time four-wheel drive system, since the vehicle is designed to be driven in high traction surfaces as well as low traction surfaces, a sensor differential is used to accommodate the difference in front and rear wheel speeds. The center differential can be locked by the driver to provide an equal 50-50% torque split front and rear. However, it must be unlocked on the high traction surfaces, otherwise we will still get the wind-up phenomenon occurring. In 4 high in a part-time 4-wheel drive, the torque split is 50% front and 50% rear. In full-time 4-wheel drive, the sensor differential must be locked to provide this 50-50% torque split, otherwise it could potentially be 100% rear only. Now in 4 high, in part-time four-wheel drive or center diff locked full-time four-wheel drive, in ideal conditions, each wheel receives 25% of this torque, but because we still have open differentials front and rear, the torque will still follow the path of least resistance. For example, if the rear right wheel is off the ground, the torque distribution is 25% each front wheel and 50% rear right wheel. This is usually okay to keep the vehicle moving. However, if the front left wheel is also off the ground, known as the diagonal effect, then the torque distribution is 50% front left wheel and 50% rear right wheel, and no torque is actually being transmitted to the wheels which do have traction. So with open differentials, whether in 4 high or 4 low, the vehicle will be at worst case 2 wheel drive and best case 4 wheel drive. Let's have a look at this diagonal effect on two different occasions. and then demonstrate 4 high in sand. Note how much further the vehicle goes compared to 2 high. Now, let's cover 4 low or low range 4 wheel drive. It is important to note that 4 low does not change the torque distribution at all. It will not overcome shortcomings with open differentials either. 4 low, however, will multiply the torque coming out of the transmission. This is the second role of the transfer case in a part-time four-wheel drive, or the only role in a full-time four-wheel drive. When 4 low is engaged, a different gear set consisting of lower gears is used. By nature of gears, low gears have low speeds corresponding to higher torque or torque multiplication. 
This low range gearing is known as the transfer ratio and is typically between 1 to 2 and 1 to 4. In our test vehicle, the transfer ratio is 1 to 2.488. Therefore, for every 2.488 turns of the transmission, the drive shafts will rotate only once. By comparison, in 2 high or 4 high, for every 2.488 turns of the transmission, the drive shafts will also rotate 2.488 times. In 4 low, the transmission torque is multiplied by the transfer ratio, so in our case, by 2.488. So what does this mean? In first gear, with the engine at 2000 RPM, the vehicle speed in 4 high will be 21 km an hour, but in 4 low will be 8.56 km an hour. This lower speed, however, corresponds to higher torque at the wheels. 4 low has its real advantages where slow speed and high torque is required. For example, steep hill climbs, hill descents, river crossings, slippery terrain like mud, snow or sand. Because of this higher torque, the vehicle's engine and transmission don't have to work as hard, reducing the likeliness of the engine and transmission from overheating, stalling or ultimately failing. Now another term associated with 4 low is the crawl ratio. The crawl ratio is simply the multiplication of the first gear ratio, the final drive ratio and the transfer ratio. In our example, the crawl ratio is 1 to 33.3 for the automatic. The manual has a crawl ratio of 1 to 45.7. The higher the crawl ratio, the lower the rotation speed of the wheels, yet higher torque provided at the wheels. Say an engine produces 430 newton meters of torque at 2000 RPM. Multiplying this by the crawl ratio gives 14,319 newton meters. In ideal circumstances, where the torque is split evenly to all four wheels, we get 3,580 newton meters at each wheel. By comparison, in four high, we only get 1,439 newton meters that is 2.488 times less. You may say, this is a lot of torque, which it is, but once you factor in large diameter four wheel drive wheels, working on demanding terrain, hauling a heavy vehicle, you need as much torque as possible. Let's have a look at four low in action. Now, we have covered in depth part-time and full-time four-wheel drive systems. Let's take a step back and look at freewheeling hubs. These hubs are used to engage or disengage the transmitter torque from the axle to the wheel and are primarily used in the front wheels of a part-time four-wheel drive. In two high, four high and four low, torque is always sent to the rear, so these rear hubs are permanently locked. However, in too high, as the vehicle moves, so do the front wheels, and therefore so do the axles and front drive shaft, even though the front drive shaft is not actually connected at the transfer case. These additional rotating parts add rolling resistance to the vehicle, and therefore more fuel is consumed and components will wear unnecessarily. To prevent this, a freewheeling hub is used to physically disengage the rotating motion from the wheel to the axle. When 4 high or 4 low are selected, these hubs have to be locked, otherwise you'd only have two wheel drive still. On older vehicles, these front hubs had to be manually locked, whereas newer vehicles, they will automatically lock. Full time 4 wheel drive systems have permanently locked hubs at the front as well as the rear. Going back to the open differential problem, a manufacturer will typically utilize one or more of these three techniques. One, a locking differential, two, a limited slip differential, or three, brake traction control. As briefly discussed before, a locking differential will provide a true 50-50% torque split to each wheel. This is the best technique in overcoming an open differential, but again, it can only be used in low traction surfaces, and it's expensive for vehicle manufacturers. However, only a four-wheel drive with locked front and rear differentials will provide true four-wheel drive. A limited slip differential, or LSD, will allow a limited amount of movement between the two wheels, and in so doing will transmit some of the torque to the wheel with more traction. 
However, since the differential will transmit torque down the path of least resistance, they are not always that effective. Some vehicles have excellent limited slip differentials, which almost negate the need for a differential lock. Not all LSDs are the same. Again, it has also added cost to the vehicle manufacturer. Another technique is brake traction control, or BTC. By using wheel sensors and clever electronics, if one or more wheels spin at different rates than the others, thus receiving more or all of the torque, the computer will apply brakes to these wheels. This increases the resistance on the wheel, and hence the differential will start to split the torque to the opposing wheel. Now some brake traction control systems are very good, which almost negate the need for a differential lock, and some systems are pretty ineffective. Because BTC is easy to adapt into a modern vehicle, since it already has ABS, ESC and so on, it is the cheapest to produce and more commonly found on modern four-wheel drives. Here's a demonstration of BTC in action. So next time you drive a four-wheel drive, you are better equipped with the knowledge of how it works, what to expect, and what its shortcomings are. Remember, not all four-wheel drives are the same, nor are all true four-wheel drives. I hope you found this video informative, and it equips you with the knowledge you need to understand your four-wheel drive system, and prepare you for your next off-road adventure. Don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.